Hey, it's Mike Draper, AWC TV and podcast. Uh, again, we're going to be joined today by uh, Jacob Wallace with ABC Window Cleaning Supply. Uh, we're going to be talking about a topic today that uh, is pretty interesting for you window cleaners, um, is how to get your business uh, exposed locally. And so, uh, Jacob, thanks for being on with us today. We appreciate your insight on this. Yeah, glad to be here. Great. So, um, yeah, it really is important for, uh, I mean, a window cleaner, he's not generally a national window cleaner. He's in a particular area. And uh, so it really is important for him to expose himself on a local level. Right. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And so what are some ways that a guy could look at doing that to try to get, get this exposure that he's looking for, the, uh, the, yeah, the exposure in the local area? Yeah, so um, there's, of course, uh, you know, billboards and ads and newspapers and whatnot. Um, but uh, I kind of wanted to focus on a few digital ways to do that <clears throat> uh, and uh, maybe just kind of open a conversation and point people towards some resources uh, for learning more. But the, the first one, um, in my mind, is SEO, which is search engine optimization. Uh, that's a really big topic. Um, and it can be kind of intimidating, but there's really some very simple aspects to it, uh, some best practices that you can follow just to make sure that your company is as visible locally online as possible. Um, so one of the best ones you can do and just uh, make it like a couple hour project you do one day is to make sure that your company is um, signed up and has accurate information on all of the local free directories. So like the couple biggest ones, of course, would be Google. So uh, you should have a Google business page and it should have you know, uh, basic information about your company, phone number, your service area, those sorts of things. Um, so make sure all of that's accurate. And then Yelp, kind of the same thing. Um, Bing, places, uh, those are kind of a couple big ones. But then what surprised me uh, when I set myself that same like couple hour project uh, was the huge number of other directories there are out there. Um, so if you just kind of uh, sit down and, and start to go through them uh, and you know just sign up for each one, um, it, it can be pretty significant for your business as people are searching for you know best window cleaner in Denver, Colorado Springs, or or you know cities that aren't in Colorado. Yeah. So when, when we're talking about uh, SEO, I think a lot of guys get confused because, you know, and, and I think Google's changed this a lot with their uh, logarithms and all this, but it, it used to be, you know, it was all these tags and meta tags and keywords and, and all these, you know, these phrases that everybody's like, oh my gosh, what is all this? And is it, is it really all that complicated? Uh, it can be as complicated as you want to make it, basically. Okay. So there's levels of diminishing return and so, you know, anybody can make a website that is informative and accurate and helpful, um, you know, and you've just like right there, you've nailed the top level of SEO. Perfect. Uh, and then you can do a bit more research and you can say, well, here's the keywords I should be targeting and, you know, my local area. So I'll go back to Denver, for example should say, well, I clean in Denver, but I also clean in these couple suburbs like Highlands Ranch and Littleton. I'm going to make sure to reference all of these things on my website. So, you know, that's just that next level. And, you know, you still haven't really hit anything very complicated. Um, but then from there, you're exactly right. You can focus in on metadata, which is just um, like when you have a search engine result. So if somebody searches window cleaner Denver and they get their list of results in Google, You've got that little blue link with some text on it that says, you know, like, um, you know, uh, A1 window cleaning. And then um, you get the text underneath it, which it says something like, you know, the premier service provider for Denver since 1963 or whatever. Um, so you can control those things through the metadata on your website. If you're using something like WordPress or Squarespace, they've got a nice, easy interface for you to type those things in. Um, so, so it's really not that difficult, uh, but then, you know, you can just keep diving deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, but, uh, in the case of window cleaning, largely you, you definitely hit a wall, 
um, in my view of, of diminishing returns because most of your competitors are not going very deep into this. So you, you don't have to go that deep either. Even just a little deeper than them, you're already ahead. All right. So a beginning person just coming into the business um, doesn't have a big, uh, you know, uh, tech team or anything like that behind them. Uh, the first thing is we want to make sure that we take advantage of all the free uh, free listings that we possibly can. Google, Yelp, any of the others that are available yep. uh, that have wide exposure in our area. And uh, and there's a pretty easy tool for identifying those. Uh, it's one of my favorite websites. It's called moz.com. That's M-O-Z.com. Uh, and you'll see a tab right at the top for uh, local SEO. And they have a really cool tool where you can type in your company name and it will tell you all the ones that you're registered with and all the ones that you're not. And so you, you can pretty easily see that list of ones that you can register with. All right. And that's Moz, M-O-Z dot com. Yep. Okay. Very good. So that's a tool that, uh, that window cleaners can use. And then the secondary thing, once you've got that done, then if you, um, you could, if, even if you built your own site, but if you had somebody build your site, you want to make sure that uh, you're using some sort of tagging or keywords that are going to direct people in your local area uh, to your business. Make your business known that you're there, basically. Yes, correct. So on a basic level, those are two things that are kind of, in my mind, it's like, okay, these two things really need to happen. I mean, the, the, these two things are essential uh, if I'm going to have a business in an area. Then if I want to dig down further, that, that would be a, another exercise or just somebody that's want to be a little more ambitious. Correct. Yeah. And you could, you know, hire somebody to help you with that, or you could dig into it yourself. But again, on that moz.com, they've got a million resources. Their, uh, their um, intro guide to SEO is probably one of the best things I've ever read. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, there's a, you can go as deep into this as you want, for sure. Absolutely. Let's talk about some other ways. Let's talk about uh, social media. Now, uh, that's a that's a way too to get uh, some lo local exposure, and um, you know one of the things I see all the time that is so silly is uh, I'll have a business. Let's say I'm in Bloomington, Illinois, so I have a business in Bloomington, Illinois, and I'm trying to I'm a window cleaner or a service provider, and I'm trying to get Jacob Wallace in uh, Denver, Colorado to to like me. <laughs> Who cares, right? You're not in my service area. You're not my target customer. Right. Yeah. I, uh, that's another topic I, I can uh, definitely get on a soapbox about, but a lot of times we, we get overly concerned about kind of vanity metrics, like how many likes we have on Facebook, um, you know, and, and things like that don't really correspond to our actual goals, which is, you know, you know, increasing revenue, growing our business, things like that. Yeah. So what are some ideas then for social media uh, what are some things that, uh, that, that you like or would advise window cleaners to uh, take a look at? Yeah, actually, I saw one that I found really inspiring recently. Um, we were talking with this company, uh, Window Ninja in Colorado Springs, um, and they're pretty active on Instagram. You can check them out. Their uh, Instagram handle is windowninja.co. Um, and they, when I asked them, like, how does social media impact your business? They had probably the best answer I've ever heard. They, uh, they use hashtags. So a hashtag is like the pound sign and then um, a word. And so you can make up whatever you want. But when lots of people use the same one, then it's, they become more popular. Um, so like in Colorado Springs, there's a, a series of popular hashtags like um, – um, like Colorado Springs and Colorado Springs Small Business and stuff like that. So uh, Window Ninja uses all of those really frequently. And Colorado Springs is just the kind of right size city where it's pretty big and has a lot of people using social media, but uh, it's still kind of small enough. It has a, a lot of um, like city pride. So there's a lot of people following these tags. Uh, so he gets a lot of exposure just because of that. Uh, and then the second thing he does that I think is really cool, uh, his name, by the way, is Michael um, also. Uh, so Michael from Window Ninja also, uh, he will um, tag the customers that he's cleaning in his post. So he just did this pizza shop. And so he did a video of him cleaning the pizza shop. He used all the hashtags I mentioned. And then he tagged this local business 
um, which increases the chance that they will comment on it or maybe share that post because it's about them. Uh, and so those two things together, he said, get him a lot of exposure in the local market because so many people follow those things um, and then help him build loyalty and get repeat business from those clients that he's tagging and helping to promote them. Yeah, very nice. Um, you know, something too that uh, I've watched my, my own son do uh, social media wise, it's, and it's not um, the big ones, it's not Facebook or whatever, but we have, a, uh, and it's probably in your area too, but it's called Nextdoor. Oh, I, I know of Nextdoor, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> and so Nextdoor is basically you, you kind of target your neighborhoods, and it's got a paid function too where you can target a whole area. But uh, basically, it's all people in that neighborhood. That's all they allow in there. And they're all talking about everything from, you know, mail service to, to whatever. But oftentimes, they are asking, hey, does anybody know uh, a good, in my son's case, he runs a little handyman business. And so does anybody know somebody that could do this or to do that? And he has built, this is all the advertising he does, but he's built a pretty cool little business um, out of just that. He doesn't do any other advertising. He doesn't even have a website. Um, so he just uses this, this local thing and then he gets on there. And what we found is Nextdoor doesn't, um, people don't respond as well to an ad. All right, but what they do respond to if somebody says, hey, um, I'm looking for a guy to put a table together for me. And, and, if, and if he gets on there and he says, hey, I do that, and then others may say, yeah, we've had him do it. It's great. And then boom, I mean, Whoa. he's their guy. And uh, so it's a little little social media aspect that a person might be able to take advantage of too uh, in the area. It's kind of a little more obscure than maybe Facebook or, or, or Instagram or something like that. But uh, it, it's proven very, very profitable for him. It, that's awesome. Um, I love hearing stories like that. I think, uh, you know, things don't have to be big like Facebook to be effective. I mean, a job's a job, right? Right. And so I think you're right. A lot of people, uh, you know, don't respond as much to ads anymore. They want contextual, like genuine interaction, which is more work, but can definitely pay off better. Yes. And um, so let's go back to the big ones, though. Let's go back to Facebook. Because um, a lot of people are on there, of course. But um, when they're doing their 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 ads or their you know their content, um, even maybe even boosting uh, something, uh, sure. what should be their focus? Should it be on a you know just how many people look at it, or do you think they should centralize it into certain areas? <laughs> I mean, I always like to focus on results, so. Uh, I would, before I clicked boost on a Facebook ad, I would ask myself what I hope to get out of it. Um, and, you know, in the case of a window cleaner, I would think at a minimum, I'd like to get some people um, asking me to bid jobs for them. But um, ideally, really, I'd like to get some jobs. Um, so, so then I would, you know, click boost and then I would pay attention to how many jobs or how many leads I seem to get out of that. Yeah. Um, and I try to be pretty brutal about that sort of thing, meaning uh, if something seems like it's not working, uh, I will like change it or cut it pretty hard. You know, mm -hmm. like I don't, I don't know Facebook anything. If a Facebook ad's not working for me, it's out. Right. And I, I think too, it's important to see, uh, just get your opinion on this, but um, you know, you'll, you, there's a lot of advice out there. <laughs> In the, in the internet world and Facebook and even in the industry groups. And you know, they're like, oh, you gotta spend $1,000 a month in order to have any impact or whatever. I would say, you know, start off like you are looking at the results, maybe start off with a smaller budget, see how things are working. And then if things seem to be working, maybe duplicate what is working, but don't just, don't spend what I call stupid money for stupid results. Know what your results are gonna be and, and, and spend accordingly. Definitely, definitely, 100% agree with that. Um, you know, and another area, I almost, it's not quite the same, but I sort of categorize it as, as paid ads, is um, lead services like Home Advisor, Angie's List, like those sorts of things. Yeah, so you're still paying to receive a lead. Um, 
I think that kind of in my mind fits into the category where I would try it and I would pay attention to the results and see, see if they're worth it or not for you. Cause like that is definitely an area that, um, can get you right to the top of Google search results. Um, you know, cause those big companies, those big referral companies are, are really good at paying. Yeah. Yeah. And I think those are, um, some markets, do very well you know with with those and other markets don't do so well so you, it's just something you're going to have to try and like you say be brutal about it. if it's not working cut it. it it doesn't need you don't you don't need to be spending money stupid money over stuff so yeah, yeah. was a uh, referrals stuff like that was that a part of your window cleaning business at all yeah it absolutely was um you know some of the larger marketing things um we were, we're in an area, so I'm in central Illinois. When I had my business, we we're in what's called the downstate five. So it's, it's the five major metro, uh, metropolitan areas south of Chicago and north of uh, St. Louis. And it's a very conservative area, um, a lot of farm community. But um, for instance, postcards. Postcards did never worked in my area. I could have spent a million dollars in postcards it just doesn't work. They, they, people didn't respond here to that. In some areas, it works great. Um, so we really had to watch and, and look at, um, you know, what we were doing and, and how we were focusing on it. But yeah, referrals were, referrals were huge. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a big believer still in uh, the, the window cleaning business, specifically a, a residential business, which we were more than that. But on our residential side, that is a relationship business. And you hear all these, you know, internet gurus and all this is, you know, ramp up your business and build it and this and you're, it's gonna take some time to build these things because it's reputation based. So you're not gonna go out there your first year, most guys aren't in a market and just kill it because they don't know you, right? right? Time. Yeah. And think about how you are as a person. Do you just let anybody in your house to do something? No, I want to know who they are. I want to know their background. I want some, I want some referrals behind them. And so you don't have that the first year in business. Yeah. Um, I, I was just always big on building that rapport. And then our residential side, we, di we did a little bit of advertising uh, and used our website and things. But for the most part, we were, we were very referral based on, on that type of thing, on, on residential. Um, our high rise and commercial work, um, that is, that to me in our area was business to business. We had outside salespeople that went out and did that for us. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, you know, since you brought up, uh, you know, so-called marketing gurus, um, I guess uh, another one of my soapboxes is I think people should really feel confident that they know their own business well. Um, you know, so of course, I think you should be open-minded and listen to all of the advice that's out there, but ultimately you have to decide what's right for your business. Um, and, and you know better what you, what your business is like, and what your area is like than any marketing guru. So, you know, if somebody was telling you, Mike, that you needed to do postcards and if you just changed it up a little bit, you'd hit the right thing, you know, that that's not true for your area. Right. Yeah. So, so, so don't be, you know, um, buffaloed by, by all of the marketing gurus out there who have the magic key that's going to get you, you know, all the leads that you need. Yeah, that's true. And, and look, if that was the case, if there was a magic key that worked everywhere, everybody would be doing it. Right. So, so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you, you just have to watch because, but there are certain things I remember, uh, for example, um, uh, what was the name of that uh, company Groupon? Um, so we tried Groupon in our area once and not great success at all. We, we barely got anybody even to bite, even at the discounted rate. I was talking to a window cleaner in Atlanta. He, he could sell a thousand window cleanings on a weekend through Groupon. Really? So it was just like, you know, that, that worked there, great, but it didn't work here. And so I think a lot of marketing is that way. I think the people that you're marketing to are different. They're, they're, their, their makeup is different in different areas and, and you've got to appeal to it and figure out how. Yeah. And you know, I, I think it's great that you tried those things, right? You tried Groupon, you tried postcards. You have to try stuff to know if it works or doesn't work. But once it doesn't work, then it's out of there. Yeah, no, I agree. 
So on a, on a local uh, exposure, then um, we want to make sure that we're yeah we're 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 targeting people for so far as social media. We want to target people that are our potential customers. Um, we want to get out of the mindset of well I've got five thousand followers. Who cares if if there's only 500 of them in your group, that's all you really got, or in your market, because those are your customers, right? It doesn't matter that everybody else is following you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, um, so SEO, local SEO, making sure that we have that in place, maybe some tagging and some stuff on our website, uh, on our social media, then we're gonna make sure that we're looking at any of those local things, maybe like Nextdoor, but definitely if we're boosting ads or putting any ads out there in front of people, they're out to the right people. And then what else would you, would you suggest for, on a local exposure? Let's see, I, that, those were some excellent starts. I think I, the, what's sort of overlooked, especially on my side of things um, as a digital marketer is exactly what you said, relationship building. Um, it's always better and easier to, you know, build relationship with and keep existing customers than to find new customers. Um, so I, I would always tell people <clears throat> not to, not to overlook that. Um, let's see what other stuff. One thing, Jacob, I just want to interrupt there just a second. There, there's two types of, of transactions. And I think because of the digital informational world, we've gotten a little more focused on what I call a transactional account. Okay, it's so I can put an ad out there and I can make you spend money. And so that's, that's a transactional acquisition, right? But that's not a loyal customer. That's a transactional customer. And the problem with transactional is, is when they see the next deal come in front of them, then they're going to purchase that as well. And that's one of the reasons I didn't like Groupon was because it didn't train a customer to be loyal it trained a customer to look for the next deal. And so they become very transactional in nature, right? So the other side of that is to build the loyalty with the customer. And those are hard to penetrate. Once I build a loyal customer and they like me and they know me and they trust me, that transactional carrot won't work on them. Right. And so that's really, when you're building a service company, that's really what you're trying to get. Now we all have to start off on transactional because we all got to eat. But as we're building and, and, and really maturing our business, we're looking for those loyal customers, those ones that, that they just, they follow us because they like us. Yeah, I think you're, you're exactly right. Um, that's like the other side of all of this discussion. Jacob, can you, can you just, could I get my wife down here and, and just have her listen to you say, Mike, you're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll write up an email for you. Mike is right in all matters. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, uh, it, it's so true. So um, you, I interrupted you. You were going to say something additional in the, in the local scheme. Let's see. What additional was I going to say? So um, we mentioned the, the stuff with social and pay attention to what's working and what's not working. So what, like what I mentioned for Window Ninja and Colorado Springs, might not work for everybody. Your customer base may or may not use Instagram. Um, you know, I would check out the, there's, you know, a million and one different types of social accounts out there and see which ones are actually relevant for your business. You know, um, maybe in your, in your market, Pinterest is the thing. It, you know, it's not one for our company, but, but who knows? Um, I think uh, you should have an experimental attitude all the time. Um, and always just be open-minded to, to trying the new things and seeing how they're working. Yep, no, I agree. Um, and yeah, we, you know, honestly, we got to a point with our business where we were pretty well established. We were kind of the king dog in the area. And um, we, we gained a lot of business just by, um, you know, this on the local level, we, we were involved with the chamber. Um, we would go to different uh, home shows and stuff in the area just so we could keep our name out in front. But the one thing I always tell people about those events is if any of them, if it's a, a home show, um, the chamber, those are all kind of social type things. If you just go there and are just going to be a member and you just go there and you don't stand out, um, it's futile, right? We, when we went to different trade shows or home shows, 
we made sure it was a big production. You know, one, one time we had uh, $50 gift cards and we had a thousand of them made up and we stood in the aisle. We called it the 50,000, clearly windows, $50,000 giveaway. And we would literally stand in the aisles, hey, here's 50 bucks, here's 50 bucks, here's 50 bucks, here's 50 bucks. And we would do that so that if they, you know, ever got the inclination of uh, get window cleaning, they knew they had money on this card, right? And so the thing is, is we touched everybody in the show that came through those aisles, not just the ones that approached our booth. So obviously our success with that was greater. When we did golf outings with the chamber, we wore, we made sure that we wore the craziest clothes that we could. One year we wore knickers really loud. One year we wore these loud shorts. And I had people in the community later say, we would walk in and do a cold call for a commercial client. And they're like, you guys are the ones that wore all them crazy clothes at the golf outing. Yes, we are. Yes, we made an impression. Yes, we were impactful. All right. So those are the things you have to do at those events. You can't just show up and be like, oh, here we are. This is clearly Windows. You know, you have to make it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because nobody, yeah, nobody wants to just hear about clearly Windows without a production at right. the Chamber of Commerce meeting. Right. Yeah, I think we found the same thing when we go to a trade show. Uh, if we're kind of under the radar, you know, we're just, we're just lost with all of the other booths, all the other people presenting. And if we go there with some sort of bang, you know, it's uh, it's far more impactful. And then later on, you know, I wondered to myself, like, oh, that was really fun. Lots of people seem to have a good time. Uh, but was it actually effective? And then later on, I've had conversations with people on the phone, just like you were describing. And, you know, they bring up those stories from the crazy things that we've done at the trade shows. Uh, and, you know, those things are memorable for them and, um, and relationship building. So yeah. I've, I've definitely had, at least anecdotally for myself, confirmed uh, exactly that you, you should definitely stand out um, whenever you can. Absolutely. Well, this is such a great topic, you know, uh, really trying to impact our business on a local level. And uh, Jacob, I really appreciate your insight. I appreciate you being on today with us and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you again. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me, Mike. Stay tuned for our next episode of AWC TV by following us on YouTube, Facebook, or our website, awcmag.com.